so very good morning to all of you guys and welcome back once again to another session of pib 247 where we are going to discuss some more important questions from the pib news which are relevant for all the government exams all right and now the nabad notification is out so i hope ab aap log apni preparation ko acche se start kar denge because most of you guys were waiting for the notification so it is out now so theek hai to ab notification aa chuka hai so please gear up your preparation and these pib sessions are very very important for the upcoming nabad examination all right and in today's session guys we are going to talk about the news from the uh, from 1st of july to 5th of july 2022 so as you all know thoda sa backlog reh gaya tha because of the vacations but all the backlog will be covered very soon all right in today's session we are going to cover 1st to 5th july and in the next session i will cover the news from 6th to 10th of july 2022 all right so don't you worry about the backlog everything will be covered all right if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join the telegram channel and if you want to have the all round preparation uh, of any government examination you can download the anojindal app all right and the link for the telegram channel is provided in the description okay so let's talk about the very first question which says consider the following statements with respect to the report harnessing green hydrogen opportunities for deep carbonization in india and you have to identify the incorrect statement all right now in in uh, from such kind of reports there is very less chance that objective questions are asked but the facts given in this report are very important if i talk about the descriptive part of the examination all right so remember this report has been released by niti ayog and this report provides a pathway to accelerate the emergence of a green hydrogen economy in india and this is actually critical for india to achieve its net zero ambitions by the year 2070 which was announced by uh, the prime minister narendra modi during the cop26 remember this report is co-authored by niti ayog and rocky mountain institute rmi okay now talking about key highlights from the reports and these highlights these points you can use in any of your descriptive answer which is talking about the energy and these days energy के ऊपर काफी ज्यादा फोकस है गवर्नमेंट्स का एंड इवन एग्जामिनर्स का सो दैट दैट इज व्हाई यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द एनर्जी पार्ट राइट सो एज पर दिस रिपोर्ट इंडिया कैन इमर्ज एज द लीस्ट कॉस्ट प्रोड्यूसर एंड ब्रिंग डाउन द प्राइस ऑफ ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन टू यूएस डॉलर वन पर के जी बाय दू थाउजेंड दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज जनरली ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन इज वेरी कॉस्टली एंड दैट इज वाई इट इज नॉट इट कैन नॉट बी यूज इन डेली यूसेज राइट there is a need of near term policy measures which can bring down the current cost of green hydrogen this will make it competitive with the existing grey hydrogen right and government can encourage near term market development by ident identifying industrial clusters so that they will be motivated to produce the green hydrogen right other than this opportunities around research and development and manufacturing of components like electrolyzers need to be identified only then we can expect a lower cost in the area of green hydrogen manufacturing and of course a globally competitive green hydrogen industry can lead to exports in green hydrogen as well thereby balancing india's balance of trade jo india ka balance of trade hai wo balance ho sakta hai if we start exporting the green hydrogen once we are successful in manufacturing green hydrogen at cheaper cost all right and this can unlock 95 gigawatt of electrolysis capacity in the nation by the year 2030 all right so that's it about this report and now let's come back to the question the report is co-authored by niti ayog and rmi this is absolutely correct no problem with this according to the report india can emerge as the least cost producer and bring down the price of green hydrogen to us dollar 1 per kg by the year 2030 there is no problem with this statement as well and as per the report a globally competitive green hydrogen industry can unlock 95 gigawatt of electrolysis capacity in the nation by 2030 so i believe all the statements are absolutely correct which are given here so therefore option e none is correct guys will be the correct answer to this question all right i hope this question is clear and now let's move ahead to question number 2 very very important definitely a question is coming definitely no one can stop this question in your examination 100% isme se question aa raha hai uh, consider the following statement with respect to the assessment of uh, states or uts based on implementation of brap 2020 which is business reforms action plan and this is nothing but ease of doing business index ease of doing business index hai aur kuch nahi hai ease of doing business index so for 22nd uh, for uh, 2020 the fifth edition has been launched this is the fifth edition which has been launched for the year 2020 so let's talk about this 
Remember, Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman has released the assessment of states or UTs based on implementation of Business Reform Action Plan for the year 2020. Talking about BRAP, so remember it is an action plan for improving the regulatory framework for business as part of ease of doing business in the country. This plan for uh, for the very first time was finalized in the year 2014 and the very first assessment was released in the year 2015 and this was the and this is the 15th edi uh, fifth edition all right the assessment of states or UTs based on BRAP signifies the ease of doing business in a state or UT as I already told you and before this four editions have been launched 2015 16 17 18 and 2019 now talking about the 2020 assessment so this time this assessment it, uh, it include 301 reform points covering 15 business regulatory areas like for example access to information single window system labor manufacturing capacities etc and sectoral reforms with 72 actions point which are spread across nine sectors are also included for the very first time and these nine sectors guys are trade license healthcare legal metrology cinema halls hospitality, fire NOC, telecom, movie shooting and tourism. So you have to remember these nine sectors because these days the exams are becoming difficult. So you never know what they are going to ask you in the examination. Okay. And remember for the year 2020 feedback could not be obtained from these states, Sikkim, Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, Lakshadweep and Ladakh due to insufficient user data. Right. And now let's talk about the index. Jo jo hamara index se nikal ke aaya hai. So the states are divided into four categories top achievers achievers aspirers aspirers aur chauta hai and the fourth is emerging business ecosystem emerging business ecosystem right so among the top achievers these are the states andhra pradesh gujarat haryana karnataka punjab tamil nadu and telangana among achievers these are the states himachal pradesh madhya pradesh maharashtra odisha uttarakhand and uttar pradesh among the aspirers, we have Assam, Chhattisgarh, Goa, Jharkhand, Kerala, Rajasthan and West Bengal. And the emerging business ecosystem may boss are states. Hai. We have Andaman and Nicobar, Bihar, Chandigarh, Daman and Diu, Dadra and Nagar, Haveli, Delhi, Jammu and Kashmir, Manipur, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Puducherry and Tripura. All right. Or is me map of the other ranking going in a coach. Jagam pe aapko mil jaga that Andhra Pradesh is at the top, but this is not uh, there is nothing like that. Index may ye jo uh, states given a ye alphabetical order may given and that's it all right so you have to remember at least the top achievers the states or uh, all the states from from the top achievers category all right so that's it about this news and now let's come back to the question brap 2020 is the fifth edition this is absolutely correct no problem with this statement bihar is among the aspirers no bihar has the emerging business ecosystem BRAP 2020 includes 301 reform points covering 15 business regulatory area. This is absolutely correct. And nine sectors are there. Odisha is among the achievers. So this is absolutely correct. There is no problem with this. So one, three and four. All right. Option C only one, three and four guys will be the correct answer. I hope this question is also clear. And now let's move ahead to question number three. And today's session guys uh, is going to be quite longer. Uh, because of course we are covering the, the news from uh, five days, right? Question number three, Airport Authority of India, which is headed by Mr. Sanjeev Kumar. The chairperson is Mr. Sanjeev Kumar of uh, uh, entering into an operation and management agreement uh, with the state government for operationalization of five state go uh, state government owned airports. Okay, has entered on a right? So we might take care no problem. With which state government the which uh, with which state government the agreement has been signed? All right, so Airport Authority of India has signed operation and management agreement for operationalization of five airports, which are owned by government of Uttar Pradesh for a long period of thirty years, and this is for the very first time that such an agreement has been signed by Airport Authority of India for operation and management. Right, and the the five airports for which the agreements. Agreement has been signed is Aligarh, Azamgarh, Chitrakoot, Mirpur and Shravasti. All right. Now talking about the terms and conditions of this agreement. So remember Airport Authority of India will operate and manage the airports and provide all necessary services including communication, navigation, surveillance and air traffic management services. Right. Government of UP will complete the initial capital works for making airports ready for the commercial operation. 
ठीक है जो यूपी की सरकार है उसको क्या करना पड़ेगा एयरपोर्ट को तैयार करना पड़ेगा पूरा एंड देन ऑपरेशन और मैनेजमेंट की जो सर्विसेज है दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया राइट एंड ऑफ कोर्स इफ फॉर मेकिंग रेडी फॉर कमर्शियल ऑपरेशन द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश विल प्रोवाइड डेडिकेटेड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर लाइक यूटिल लाइक वाटर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड ड्रेनेज कनेक्शन एक्सेट्रा एट द एयरपोर्ट राइट सो बेसिकली गवर्नमेंट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश विल मेक रेडी द एयरपोर्ट फॉर द कमर्शियल ऑपरेशन एंड देन फॉर द नेक्स्ट थर्टी ईयर्स ऑपरेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट विल बी डन बाय द एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया दैट्स इट और राइट therefore guys the correct answer will be what with which state government the agreement has been signed so it has been signed with the government of uttar pradesh option e will be the correct answer okay moving ahead to question number 4 five new airports have been added to the list of 53 airports under krishi udan scheme and now the total number of airports under krishi udan scheme is 58 right during a stakeholder workshop organized for evaluation of krishi udan 2.0 krishi udan 2.0 was launched uh, last year in the year 2021 by the ministry of civil aviation which is headed by mr jyoti raditya sindhya and he has been recently appointed as the ministry of steel as well all right the workshop was organized by ministry of civil aviation in collaboration with which of the following organization now can you identify this organization in collaboration with uh, uh, this uh, stakeholder workshop was organized so this was organized in collaboration with fikki and As the question says, five new airports have been added to the list of fifty-three airports under Krishi Udan. So, which are these five airports? So, these are the five airports which are Belagavi, Jhar Suguda, Jabalpur, Darbhanga, and Bhopal. Right. So, these are the five airports. Do remember the name of these five airports as well. Option B, Fikki, is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number five. I hope question number four clear. Tha. Now, let's talk about question number five. Consider the following statements with respect to Pradhan Mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprise scheme, and you have to identify the correct statement. So you must be wondering, this is not a new scheme, of course. Then why we are discussing about it? We are discussing about it because it has recently completed its two years of implementation. This ne two saal pure kar liye hain, and when it has completed on twenty ninth of June two thousand and twenty two, it has completed two years of implementation. All right, and that is why it is in news. Remember the scheme was launched on 29 January uh, June 2020 by Ministry of Food Processing Industry under Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, and these are the achievements which have been declared by the ministry. Right, so we have to talk about the achievements because these days they are asking questions from the achievements as well. Okay, so PM FME scheme is currently being implemented in 35 states and union territories. Nearly 50,000 applicants have been registered. on the portal and more than 25000 applications have uh, been successfully submitted right various mous and joint letters have been signed by various ministries organization and the banks and the most important among all of them is the nodal bank agreement which was signed with the union bank of india right training of beneficiaries is being conducted on food product processing including food safety and hygiene and entrepreneurship development program and the uh, you know the the responsibility of this training is given on niftem right niftem which is an organization under the ministry of food processing industry 75 incubation centers have been approved under the scheme and online portal for submission of incubation center proposals has been developed other achievements if i talk about so over 1 lakh shg members have been identified and they have been given the seed capital which is amounted to rupees 203 crores right mous have been signed with nafed and trifed for marketing and branding activities under the scheme 10 odop one district one product brands in association with nafed have been launched this we have discussed in detail in uh, in two or three two or three times during the pib sessions and two state level brands have been successfully launched which are asna from punjab and bheem thadi from maharashtra all right so these are some of the achievements guys of this scheme uh, which were declared which were announced by the ministry of food processing industry on the occasion of completion of two years of this scheme all right and now let's come back to the question on 29 june 2020 the scheme has completed three years of implementation is that so no it has completed two years of implementation right asna is a brand from uttar pradesh launched under the under the scheme no this is a brand from punjab and bheem thadi is from maharashtra 75 incubation centers have been approved under the scheme this there is no problem with this statement 
MOUs have been signed with Nafed and Trifed to take up the marketing and branding activity. So this is also correct. I think there is no problem with this. And we have to identify the correct statement, which means option E. Only three and four guys will be the correct answer to this question. I hope this question is also clear. Moving ahead to question number six. This is a very straightforward question. We will not go into the details of this. The central government has approved a proposal to provide financial relief under journalist welfare scheme to the families of 35 journalists who have lost their lives. How much financial assistance is provided to the family of deceased journalists under this scheme, right? So, sida sida question hai, aur isme se agar question aaya, to this will be the question only, theek hai? Uh, the examiner will not go into the detail definitely, all right? So, how much amount uh, is given as the financial assistance? So, it is rupees 5 lakh, option D is the correct answer under the journalist welfare scheme, all right? Option D. Question number seven is again a very straightforward question. There is no need of details. Which of the following institutes or organizations has signed an MOU with the Incubation and Enterprise Support Center of IIM Shillong to boost the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the Northeastern region? Now, can you identify this organization? Yes, this is Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship, which is located in Guwahati, which is located in Guwahati. Option A is the correct answer, guys, to this question. I hope this is also clear. Question number eight, on International Coastal Cleanup Day that will be celebrated on 17th September 2022, Government of India will run a cleanliness campaign which is named as Swachh Sagar Surakshit Sagar, right? Uh, clean Ocean and Protected Ocean, right? It will be a mega cleanliness drive to clean 75 beaches across the country. A mobile app has been launched to spread awareness about the campaign. You just have to name that app, okay? So very easy question, I believe this. So on International Coastal Cleanup Day that will be celebrated on 17 September 2022, Government of India will run this campaign which is Swachh Sagar, Surakshit Sagar. And remember it will be the first of its kind campaign across the world. And it will be the longest coastal running, uh, coastal cleaning campaign, right? This campaign will include Ministry of Earth Sciences, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Indian Coast Guard and National Disaster Management Authority and there uh, there will be other social organization and educational institutions as well. All right. This drive will be carried out at 75 beaches across the country and a 75 days long campaign will be launched has been launched actually from 3rd July 2022 to raise awareness about this campaign. Okay. And this campaign will end on 17 September 2022. And to raise the awareness about this campaign, a mobile app which is known as Eco Mitram has been launched by the government to spread awareness about the campaign. All right. I hope this news is clear. And therefore, the correct answer to this question is option C, Eco Mitram, because we have you have to identify the name of that app. Okay. Moving ahead to question number nine. Name the operation launched by Railway Protection Force in collaboration with Narcotics Control Bureau against smuggling of narcotics through rail. Now, this is again a very straightforward question. We will not go into the details because that is not required. You just have to name this operation. The name of the operation, guys, is Operation Narcos, which is being run uh, by, uh, which is being operated by uh, the Railway Protection Force, right? Option B, Operation Narcos is the correct answer. Question number 10, which of the following scheme of Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, which is headed by Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan, and he is also the Minister of Education, right, has been made the part of DBT scheme and now the benefits under this scheme are directly, will be directly transferred to the accounts of the beneficiaries, right. The name of the scheme is National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme and now this scheme has been made a part of DBT scheme. Now what happens till now that is that under the scheme 25% of the stipend uh, up to rupees 1500 per month per apprentice is provided, right? And till now the companies used to pay apprentices the ap entire amount and then seek reimbursement from the government. Abhi tak hota tha ki jo government hai, uh, jo companies hai, wo apprentices ko paise de 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 thi and then they seek reimbursement from the government. But from now on, <clears throat> with the launch of uh, this scheme as a part of DBT scheme, the government will directly transfer the stipend into the bank accounts of the apprentice or into the bank accounts of the beneficiaries, right? So this will be the benefit of this, uh, uh, you know, integration of this scheme with the DBT scheme, all right? And therefore, 
द करेक्ट आंसर इज वॉट नैशनल अप्रेंटिसशिप प्रमोशन स्कीम मुविंग अहेड टू क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन Which of the following has released a compendium on Ayush based practices from states and UTs which provides information about various Ayush based initiatives and practices adopted by states and union territories in India for containing and managing the COVID-19 outbreak now in this compendium uh, only uh, some kind of initiatives were given uh, which were launched by the states and union territories for containing and managing the COVID-19 outbreak so those initiatives state wise initiatives and ut wise uh, initiatives are not important for the examination you just have to remember that this compendium has been released by niti ayog option b is the correct answer and now please don't get confused it was not released by ministry of ayush it was released by niti ayog okay question number 10 ministry of science and technology urged for promoting startups in carbon neutral uh building construction during solar decathlon india award ceremony solar india decathlon is a collaboration of india with which of the following country now quite interesting question because is tarike ka question exam mein nahi aata hai but these days they are asking anything so that's why i have included this news as well so minister of science and technology and who is the minister dr jitendra singh has participated in solar decathlon india award ceremony during the event Uh, dr jitendra singh urged for promoting startups in carbon neutral building construction area and talking about solar decathlon india so remember it is a us india collaboration under an mou between indo us science and technology forum and us department of energy and this initiative this uh, decathlon india solar decathlon india is supported by department of science and technology uh, from the government of india side right this decathlon is conducted by the alliance for an energy efficient economy and the indian institute for human settlements and remember it is a unique initiative that is building a network of young professionals who are interested in innovating and implementing the resilient net zero energy buildings to combat the climate change all right bas itna hi padhna hai isse zyada padhne ki zarurat nahi hai and yes the solar india decathlon is a collaboration between india and usa option e is the correct answer to this question क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन पे चलते हैं द वन मंथ लॉन्ग वृतिका रिसर्च इंटर्नशिप हैज बीन कंक्लूडेड अंडर एक्सेलरेट विज्ञान वृतिका स्कीम विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इंस्टीट्यूट्स और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज द नोडल एजेंसी टू इंप्लीमेंट द एक्सेलरेट विज्ञान वृतिका स्कीम राइट सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दिस सो रिमेंबर द न्यूज इज दिस द वन मंथ लॉन्ग वृतिका रिसर्च इंटर्नशिप स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग रिसर्च बोर्ड विच इन शॉर्ट एज सर्व एस राइट has been concluded and it was conducted under a scheme which is known as accelerate vigyan vrittika scheme now talking about the scheme so remember the objective of this scheme is to provide opportunities to the promising post graduate students from universities and colleges to get exposure and hands on research skill development experience right this scheme is being implemented by ministry of science and technology and the nodal agency to implement this scheme is science and engineering research board which in short is SERB all right now under the scheme internship programs are organized by SERB to provide such opportunities and for the internship period the stipend is also provided to the interns which is amounting to rupees 30000 and the duration of internship shall be of at least 4 weeks and not more than 2 months okay and therefore jo 1 month long tha yani ki 4 hafte ka ye internship program tha jo ki abhi recently khatam hua hai okay so therefore the correct answer is option b guys science and engineering research board option b is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 14 very very important question very very important digital india week 2022 2022 has been inaugurated by the prime minister in gandhi nagar in gandhi nagar which is of course in gujarat during the event he launched various initiatives which among the following are not the initiatives which were launched during the event सो हम एक एक इनिशिएटिव की बात करेंगे सो प्लीज कॉन्सेंट्रेट हियर सो दिस इवेंट वॉज लॉन्च इन गांधीनगर विद द थीम कैटेलाइजिंग न्यू इंडिया स्टेकेट एंड दीज आर द इनिशिएटिव विच हैव बीन लॉन्च द वेरी फर्स्ट इज डिजिटल इंडिया जेनेसिस एंड जेनेसिस स्टैंड फॉर जेन नेक सपोर्ट फॉर इनोवेटिव स्टार्टअप नाउ दिस डिजिटल इंडिया जेनेसिस इट इज अ डीप टेक स्टार्टअप प्लेटफॉर्म टू डिस्कवर to promote to grow and make successful the startups in tier 2 and tier 3 cities of india and for this rupees 750 crores have uh, has been allocated right 
द नेक्स्ट इनिशिएटिव इज डिजिटल इंडिया भाषिनी विच विल इनेबल ईजी एक्सेस टू द इंटरनेट एंड डिजिटल सर्विसेज इन इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस ठीक है बिकॉज ये बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है इन द रूरल एरियाज की जहाँ पे इंटरनेट और डिजिटल सर्विसेज है इंडियन लैंग्वेज में गवर्नमेंट को प्रोवाइड कराना पड़ेगा राइट सो इट विल हेल्प इन द क्रिएशन ऑफ कंटेंट इन इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस द की इंटरवेंशन इन बिल्डिंग ए आई बेस्ड लैंग्वेज टेक्नोलॉजी सोल्यूशन फॉर इंडियन लैंग्वेजेस विल बी द क्रिएशन ऑफ मल्टी लिंगल डेटा सेट्स एंड डिजिटल इंडिया भाषिनी विल एनेबल to develop these multilingual data sets and with the help of this internet and digital services will be provided to uh, to the country in the indian languages okay india stacked out global it is a global repository of key projects like aadhar upi digital locker covin vaccination platform gomedi marketplace diksha platform ayushman bharat digital health mission and why this platform why this repository has been launched so it will position india as a leader in building digital transform from uh, transformation projects at a population scale all right the next initiative is my scheme which is i will which i believe is very very important initiative so it is a service uh, service discovery platform facilitating the access to government scheme whatever scheme for which i am eligible i can identify from this platform which is known as my scheme all right it aims to offer a one stop search and discovery portal where users can find schemes that they are eligible for all right and finally the very important meri pehchan initiative which is a national single sign on for one citizen login it is a user authentication service in which a single set of credentials will provide access to multiple online applications or services theek okay? hai with the help of one authentication service with the help of single set of credentials one can log in into various kind of services provided by the government of india all right and now let's come back to the question so which of the following are not the uh, is not the initiative is not the initiative so meri pehchan is there my scheme digital india bhashini digital india genesis multi bhashi is not there option e is the correct answer and let's move ahead to the last question for today but not the least because This is one of the most important question uh, जो कि आज हमने कवर किया है एंड डेफिनेटली ये क्वेश्चन इज गोइंग टू बी आस्ट इन द अपकमिंग नवाड एग्जाम अगर नहीं आया तो पैसे वापस भाई साहब कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू फर्स्ट एडिशन ऑफ स्टेट रैंकिंग इंडेक्स फॉर नेशनल फूड सिक्योरिटी एक्ट एंड यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई दी करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट राइट सो दिस इज द वेरी फर्स्ट रैंकिंग विच हैज बीन रिलीज बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कंज्यूमर अफेयर्स फूड एंड पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड दिस इंडेक्स ranks the state based on the implementation of national food security act in the respective states all right so the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution which is headed by mr piyush goyal has released the first ever state ranking index for national food security act this index represents the status and progress of implementation of nfsa and various reform initiatives that uh, took place across the country right now talking about the index so remember this index is largely focused on nfsa distribution and in future it will also include procurement and pradhan mantri garib kalyan and the yojana distribution as well the index is based on three key pillars which is nfsa coverage targeting and provisions delivery platform and nutrition initiatives right and the states and uts are categorized into three parts general states and uts special states and uts and those uts where the nfsa is operating in dbt mode the three uts where the nsa is operating in dbt mode are dadar and nagar haveli and daman and diu puducherry and chandigarh in these uts the you know the ration is not provided to the beneficiaries instead the amount instead the amount is provided in the through the direct benefit transfer mode in the bank accounts of the beneficiaries and with the help of that amount they can they can buy the ration from the market right so there are three uts in the countries where nfsa is being implemented in dbt mode all right so among the general states and uts odisha has been ranked number 1 followed by uttar pradesh and andhra pradesh among special states and uts tripura has been ranked at number 1 followed by himachal pradesh and sikkim and special mein sare northeastern himalayan or island regions are hain theek hai and among the uts operating in dbt mode it is dadar and nagar haveli and daman and diu which is ranked at number 1 followed by puducherry and chandigarh all right 
so that's it about this ranking and now let's come back to the question the index is based on three pillars which are nfsa coverage targeting and provisions of the act delivery platform and nutrition initiative bilkul sahi baat hai no problem among general category states and uts uttar pradesh has topped the index no it is odisha right and among special category states and uts tripura has topped the index this is absolutely correct no problem with this and therefore the correct answer will be option c only one and three because we have to identify the correct statements all right all right guys that's it for today's session i hope you guys have enjoyed this session if you have guys you guys have enjoyed the session hit the like button and apne dosto yaaron rishtedaron sabko bata do that nabad notification is out now so please start your preparation and government scheme ke session already start mein kar chuka hu along with the art current affairs session and these pib current affairs session are very very important for the examination all right so thank you so much for watching guys in the next session we are going to cover the news from 6 to 10 july 2022 So I will see you in the next session goodbye take care and god bless